Hey guys, I'm doing a video today to share how I overcame the fear of evangelism. Now, when I'm talking about overcoming the fear of evangelism, I'm not saying that today I have no fear whatsoever and I could easily go out and talk to people and strangers and I really don't care about what people think and it just comes so easy to me. Uh, I just want to start off by saying that's not the case. I know that some people have really have the grace to evangelize and they do it so easily and for them it's a, it's fun and and, and it's like so it comes super easy and natural to them. I want to start off by saying that's not the case for me. Um, growing up, I was a very quiet child. I was very to myself. I was very introverted and um, I was that 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 kid that you know that just never spoke a word. I don't know if. Uh, is uh, due to the fact that I'm Asian or due to the fact that I never grew up with with, uh, uh, with a father. But whatever the case might be, I was a super quiet kid and never spoke to anybody. I had a hard time making friends because I was so shy. And, um, you know, and, and even to this day, I still would consider, consider myself more introverted than extroverted. Um, you know, even though I don't, don't like a putting a label on myself just for the sake of uh, just giving you a picture. Um... So I just really wanted to share this video just to encourage somebody who may be going through the same thing that I went through, you know, growing up, having a really hard time talking to people, especially in the area of evangelism. Now, by the grace of God, when I got saved around the age of 19, God did do a mighty transformation in my heart where I was able to open up and actually talk to people and fellowship with people. But that aspect of being a, a quiet, shy person, it didn't totally leave me, you know, just just by nature, that's my personality. I, I'm more closed, I'm more reserved, I, I, I like to spend time uh, alone. And so that's just the, the nature of, of, of who I am. Maybe you won't be able to tell by this video, but it's just, it's just the truth. Even sharing this video for me is a challenge because it's it's scary you know i'm afraid of what people think of me but i wanted to do it just because i know there are people out there who have gone are going through the same things that i went through or is going through and um you know by the grace of god i was able to evangelize quite often you know i was able to have, find the courage to go out and pray for people on the streets i was able to go out and preach the gospel uh at the bus stops in the metros and uh, even eventually doing open air preaching and things like that so i just wanted to share my i could say your my testimony and how i was able to come to this point all right so when i got born again i began to read the word of god i began to listen to sermons online you know i was very very hungry for god and i came to uh, such a, a, a reality that the word of God is so true and that the eternal eternity is so true that heaven is true hell is true and I had that revelation and to me it was so real to me in my heart and so that's why in my heart I, I, I had a, a desire to really go out and uh, talk to people about Jesus so that people could go to heaven you know because hell is a real place and uh, and you know, if you know the truth, then you could understand that that hell is no joke, and that as believers, as Christians, us who are saved, we have a responsibility to, to go out and preach the gospel. But now I I had that truth and I had that desire, but the problem is, I was such a timid, shy, quiet person. I didn't know how to overcome this fear, and so that's why I wanted to share you guys uh, a little bit about my story. Now. When I started off, you know, I used to watch videos online. You know, I watched a lot of videos, sermons online. And one day I started watch, I started, I found a Todd White. Many of you might know him, Todd White. He would go out and pray for people in the streets. This was like in the really, really beginning. And uh, that really, really inspired me because that's the same thing I saw in the Bible and I really wanted to live the Bible. But again, the problem was I was very afraid of what people think of me. I was very quiet. I was very shy. So I'm sorry to say for all of you, you know, who... Are going through the same thing I'm sorry to say there is really no easy way around it for from my experience I don't know maybe someone has a secret out there who could turn the switch and make you go out and preach the gospel you know like so easily it's no easy way around it for me it was a challenge I had to break through um, because I couldn't live with myself not preaching the gospel I couldn't live with myself uh, letting the fear of man the fear of what people think me keep me from talking to people about Jesus because Knowing the truth, you know, I told myself I absolutely have to overcome this fear and be a hand of God in this world to lead people to Christ. So now I did have that, you know, that, 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 that burning desire. And, and I'm sure many of you do have that burning desire. If you know the truth, if you know that heaven is real, you know that hell is real, you know that Jesus is the only way. And so the way I saw it, 
I just said I have to do it. I just said I have to do it. You know, I, even though, you know, I'm afraid of what people think of me, even though, you know, people might see me crazy. You know what? I cannot live my, my life like this anymore. So I went out, you know, I used to copy Todd White and man, I've got like, uh, like Tom Fisher. I used to follow his uh, YouTube videos as well. He would go out and pray for the sick. And uh, I told myself if he could do it, I could do it, you know, and the Bible says that believers shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. And so I would go out and whenever I see sick people, I'd be like, oh man, I have to go pray for him. I have to pray for him. But then I would chicken out every time I would chicken out. Um, eventually, you know, eventually I found the courage. Eventually I told myself, you know what, even the... I felt like nobody around me was evangelizing, nobody around me was praying for the sick, but you know, finding inspiration from these men of God and finding inspiration from the Bible, um, I told myself, you know what, I have to go do this, I have to you know, put the Word of God in practice. And then once I did it, oh my gosh, it was so amazing, it was such a relief, it was such an excitement when I saw people healed and set free, when I found the courage to preach the gospel. And what I found interesting is that the initial step is the biggest challenge. The initial step of going out and beginning to talk to people, beginning to, you know, get out of your comfort zone is, is, is the biggest challenge. But then once you get that first step, then you could overcome. Then you're in a place where you're in the zone and you're and God begins to work through you because that's all God wants is obedience. Once he sees that you obey, the Holy Spirit comes and the Holy Spirit begins to move and act through you and then you realize that it's no longer you doing it because God is just waiting for people to rise up and go out and preach the gospel, you know, and ever since then, you know, I still have the that, that challenge. Every time I go out and preach the gospel, I've been in the faith for maybe eight years or so now. And it's still a challenge. It's still, I have to get past that fear. And I could say that that fear is a temptation. It's a temptation of the flesh. It's a temptation of the devil because the devil wants to hinder you from preaching the gospel. He'll do everything to stop you from preaching the gospel. And so we have to fight this fear and get over this fear. We should not let the fear of man hinder us from proclaiming the name of Jesus from the rooftops because Jesus Christ is the only way that we could go to heaven and we need to bring as many people to heaven as we possibly can. And so throughout my faith journey, my one of my main challenges that I keep trying to overcome is overcoming this fear. And I, I do my best to kill the flesh even though my flesh doesn't want to go out and preach the gospel. You know, I'm just like you. It's not like I, I every day I get up and say, yes, I'm so excited to go preach the gospel. That's not the case. It's just that I know that the word of God is true. I know that as a believer, I have a responsibility to save people from the hellfires. You know, I, I had, there's one example that uh, that I just thought, um, that, 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 that I was reminded of just now, is that a man of God said, if, if there's a boat going towards a waterfall and they're not seeing it but you could see it because you're in the distance far away you're gonna go crazy and be like hey don't go because th there is a, there's a hill you're gonna fall and th but you're not gonna say oh no i'm afraid of what people think of me therefore i'm just gonna let that that ship continue and just go down no you're just not gonna care you're gonna do whatever you can and so that that you know teaching really marked me and it, and it's so true and so you know us as believers I know it's challenging I know it's hard to overcome that fear but you just have to come to a point where it's just like you can't do it you can't not preach the gospel you can't live years and years and years knowing the truth and never telling your neighbor never telling your friend about Jesus because in the end what's gonna happen the blood will be on your hands because as a believer you have a responsibility to preach the gospel and so. The more you do it, the easier it gets. The more you do it, the you know, and it's exciting when you go out and do it and you see how God works in amazing ways. God works through you because God is so in need of people because the laborers are few that once a child of God goes, rises up and goes and preaches the gospel, God, you know, he's with it. You know, he's going to be like, yes, now I can work. Now I can touch lives. Now I can move through my church, move through my people. And he just wants people that are available. Like a, like a pastor once said, William McDowell, um, great worship leader, you know, that, that I listen to his music. Um, he once said that, that, God, that God is not looking for um, ability, but he's looking for availability. Anybody who would make himself available, God is going to do mighty things, especially in the area of evangelism. If you go out, preach the gospel, oh, God always moves. Every time I go out and preach the gospel, I realize, man, like, it's God that does it. It's God who, who leads you, who guides you, who speaks through you. And it's amazing. Every time you go out and preach the gospel, you're going to see amazing testimonies. People are going to be touched. People are going to be saved. And you're just going to be amazed at, and say, wow, God could use me. And I want to tell you, 
who are listening, you know, you who may be afraid to go out, that yes, God wants to use you. The ones who are quiet, the ones who are shy, the ones who are the least likely to preach the gospel, God loves to glorify himself to the least likely people. And so I'm telling you, like, now I, I, I've come to a place where I hate this fear. I hate this fear of man. I hate that fl the, the, the flesh who, who is afraid of what people think of me, who is afraid of opening my mouth, that flesh, you know, it's the flesh. It's the works of the flesh who wants to keep you from, from, from preaching the gospel. Your flesh and the devil. And so, in my Christian walk, you know, throughout my walk, you know, I always try to do challenges to overcome that fear, you know. Um, once I, I, it was easier for me to preach the gospel on, on the streets and pray for people on the streets, then I said, okay, I'm going to go to the next step. I want to knock on doors and, and I want to, you know, preach the gospel to like, to my neighbors. And, and it, again, it's like, it took me a while to get over that hump. And, uh, but I just knew at some point I just have to do it. I have to go out and preach the gospel. You know, if the gospel is true, I have no choice but to preach the gospel to my neighbors, the people that I have access to, the people that who, who are that I'm able to reach with the gospel. So I began going door to door, preaching the gospel, you know, getting rejected, getting the door slammed in my face. Um, but at the same time, seeing fruit and seeing people open to the gospel. And then once, you know, you see a soul touched and soul saved, it's all worth it in the end. You, you don't care about all that persecution all the times that this door was shut in your face. You don't care. Uh, just because it's it's just an unexplainable experience that 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 happens when when God actually uses you to touch a soul, um, and then once I got you know more comfortable to preach the gospel door to door, then I said you know I have to move into another I have to overcome another fear you know and that's you know for example like open air preaching you know for years I told myself I have to do open air preaching just because it's biblical that's it's, it's like as if it's the most biblical way to do it if you read the Bible if you read Jesus the, uh, John the Baptist all the, the disciples they went out to the crowds and they preached the gospel in the open air you know they made fools of themselves and so I told myself you know I had a vision that I would do it in downtown Montreal, you know, but I, I was so afraid just because I, I have never seen anybody do it. You know, nobody around me was doing it, but I saw it in the Bible and I saw it as well. I saw people, uh, preachers on YouTube who were able to do it. Maybe there were some who didn't really do it in a loving way, but I was still inspired by, by those people, even those, the, the, the hell preaching, uh, you know, doom and gloom kind of preachers. Um, you know, I, I didn't always agree with the way they did it, but the fact that they were able to stand up and, and like, preach the gospel while people think they're crazy that inspired me and I told myself I can't go on living my Christian life without living this biblical way of preaching the gospel and then one day you know it took me at least two years to to actually come to that point I wish it had it you know if, if uh, I would have overcome that fear from the beginning um, I would have done it a lot sooner and um one day I said, okay, I'm going to go out by myself and uh, just stand somewhere downtown and just began preaching the gospel. And, then, and eventually, you know, even though I was so afraid, so scared, I said, no, I hate that fear and I'm going to overcome that fear. And I got up and I started opening my mouth and started preaching the gospel. And all of a sudden, whoo, God began to give me words. God meant began to put a fire in my heart, and all that fear went away. And it's as if God is speaking through you. It's a crazy experience when when God uses you to evangelize and open up preaching. It's just a whole other experience that that, that you'll experience if you do it. Like like God really moves and honors you know His children, and I'm sure He understands that it's not easy. And I'm sure you know that he loves to encourage his children, you know, with his gifts, with his spirit, and he will give you words, and it's just amazing. And so, you know, and now I'm still on that journey of trying to overcome this fear, this fear of rejection, this fear of what people think of me, this fear of that will hinder me from preaching the gospel, and I want to go to another level, you know, and, and then I, I, I want to do another challenge. You know, I yes, I've done open-air preaching. Now I want to do preaching in the subways. Now I want to do preaching... Um, I don't know, even online. Online, it's a challenge for me to share this video. is a great challenge for me, but I'm going to overcome that fear. And so I just wanted to encourage you. I mean, I know it's not, maybe uh, you're not uh, satisfied with, with this, you know, because cause honestly, for me, there was no easy way out. It's not, it's not like an easy, okay, if you have these three keys, it's going to come like that. No, it's going to come by obedience to the Word of God 
killing the flesh. Just like the, when you go to the gym, the first time you do it, it's really, really difficult. And it's really challenging. You don't want to get up to go to the gym. But you force yourself because it's, you know it's the right thing to do. And eventually, you know, you keep going. You keep going. It's really difficult. But then eventually it becomes a habit. It becomes a lifestyle. And then eventually you begin enjoying it. It becomes easier. And then you want to go to the next level. You want to go to the next challenge. And then... You know, you see yourself getting stronger and stronger. It's the same thing spiritually, you know. It's the same thing. So I just wanted to encourage you guys to really get out of your comfort zone, you know. Don't be that 70-year-old on a rocking chair wondering what if. What if you would have gone out and preached the gospel? What if you would have prayed for people on the street? How many sick people you have you would have seen healed? What if you would have knocked the door on your neighbors? How many of your neighbors would have been healed? What if you would have stood downtown Montreal and began proclaiming the name of Jesus? What if? Don't let that question remain... Uh, without you going out, preaching the gospel, overcoming that fear. God bless you. I love you all. In Jesus' name, amen.